laggy. Are are you down there? I miss him, bros. Uh, what's up, hunters? It's your favorite ninja poir, and finally, here is the meta long sword build video you've all been waiting for. I'm gonna present both god and budget versions and have builds for both Sacred Sheep Proactive Playstyle, my favorite, and a mixed style that favors EI more and simply using Sacred only when there's knockdowns. However, I have decided to limit this video to mainly raw longsword only. I'll do an elemental one in the future because I do think elemental is perhaps even better than raw and well, speedruns seem to point in that direction. So if you want to see that video, make sure to give this video a like and leave a comment so I know that you guys are interested. But anyways, first, pets. Two routes, cat route and dogecoin route. For cat route, one fighter palico with rousing roar with power drum. Rising Roar is a 30% affinity increase that lasts over a minute, and Power Drum is an attack and defense increase. And if you use Felvine at the start of your hunt, you can speed your cats up to do this. Give them a para or sleep weapon, status attack up skill, support skill, and healing clover back. The second route is Bark Bark. Two dogs with the new Silk Binder move that you have to unlock through a delivery quest for Steel Gaiju Whiskers. But these things spit out crazy damage with range attack up, range centric, Pierce attack up and your choice for the rest. Equip sleep or para weapons and watch them destroy monsters. And I even got like three sleep procs on Raytheon within three minutes of the hunt. So they're insane with this new Palamo gear and if you want to build them more DPS, you can probably equip an elemental weapon instead for more damage if you don't want the monster immobile occasionally, which is arguably better for longsword since countering equals damage. Next up, food. Standard booster for number one, but we got some new food effects, such as Shifter, which can heal you whenever you swap scrolls, which is usually the case for the mixed style. But this lets you heal for free while not ruining your Harvest Moon, for example. So that would be your second slot, and for your third, it can be Weakener or perhaps Defender. Weakener only if you're a host, but Fighter can be an option if you want to zoom around more with Sacred Sheath. And now the builds. The reality is, Abyssal Flicker is just the best raw longsword in the game. Its long purple sharpness bar means you can forgo the old protective polish. Level 3 slot means you can counteract the negative crit to be only negative 10% depending on style with your soul. And yeah, it's easy to make since the final boss is only master rank 6, while a lot of the higher final tier weapons are unlocked much later, and still can only barely match it, but with worse outcomes when rousing roar kitties become factors. With a Rousing Roar Cat, you can forego Diora Soul for the 5% anti-species damage, giving you more total damage than other options. But here is the first Flicker build. Meta Flicker. This is the God Charm version first, aka PC version, and I'll show the budget option after. This is for a mixed playstyle, using Sacred Sheath mostly on knockdowns only. With this armor setup, you get full attack, crit eye, Crit Boost, Wex, Quick Sheave, Whisper, and one level Chain Crit and Max Might, with Speed Sharpening level 3 for whenever your perp turns to white. Chain Crit gives you 5 extra raw for Sacred Sheath and then 10 extra raw for EI or Sakura or Helmbreaker. Since you get 5 raw on the first hit, and then 5 more hits gets you an additional 5 for a couple seconds. So if you continue to attack often, you'll upkeep that 10 raw easily. This build is best with the Rouser Roar Cat as you don't get 100% crit without it, but with one, you can lose the Aura Soul for Anti-Species Rampage Deco to get 100% crit with one Max Might up, and 5% more damage to the monster, which I recommend saving two loadouts, one with the Dragon Deco and the other with Fang Beast, since that's all there is in Endgame. But if you don't want to run Rousing Roar, maybe you want to run Gathering Cat or PP Wolves, then this God EI Flicker Bill will be more consistent. You go back to the Aura Soul, but gain Max Might 3. Again, EI focused build since you can't hop around with Sac, Otherwise, your Max Might becomes useless, so keep that in mind. No Stamina, no Max Might. For the Budget Mix Style build, here is the setup. This is with a Quick Sheave 2, 2-2 two, two Charm. In comparison, the only thing you lose is 2 Attack compared to the Meta Flicker build, so actually pretty good. But if you only got a Quick Sheave 1, 2-2 two, two Charm, then you go down to Attack 4, but still not bad of a loss. And similarly, if you don't want to use Rousing Roar Cat, here is the Max Might Budget version. Same charm, and all the budget longsword builds I'll make will be QS222, so start hunting for it. And yes, I do think Quick Sheath 3 is still mandatory even if you use Sacred Sheath. But now we'll move to my style, the Moving Sack. This basically gets you a Vade Extender 2, which if you've seen my streams, 
Hopping around makes this way more fun in my opinion, and I dodge tons of threatening attacks easily. In my opinion, this is the meta build for multiplayer. Since you can't rely on monsters attacking you for counters, and well, Harvest Moon is poo-poo in multiplayer as well, so multi-flicker. You lose one attack and one chain crit compared to mixed, but gain extender and level 2 crit draw. Crit draw was buffed in Sunbreak to where the infinity increase lasts about 2 seconds after the draw attack, so it does not just affect the first hit like a couple of people mentioned in my Longsword Master Guide, which by the way, if you want to learn the art of this sword, check that video out. But yeah, with Crit Draw 2, you lose Diora's Soul for anti-species for big damage hits. Since 30 from Crit Draw, 50 from Wex against the weak point, 40 from Crit Eye equals 120% crit. Minus 25% from the sword equals 95% crit. So, okay, not 100%, but yeah, I trade that 5% from Diora for that 5% damage increase. Although, your normal attacks will not benefit from Crit Draw, so up to you. Diora or Anti-Species, and just in case, in order to get the Outpost HQ Greaves, you must complete Gallius's follower quest and beating Furious Rajang with him will unlock the set for you. So you probably have to have Master Rank 50 I believe, and the charm should be Attack 3, Wex 2, 311 for this. Again, God Charm, but might as well call it PC Charms at this point. But with a Switch Charm, here is the budget version. You lose 2 attack and the crit draw, so you will have to use Diora's Soul for this one, and potentially Rising War Cat can be in consideration as well to guarantee those sacks hitting. So those are the main raw meta builds for Sunbreak's endgame. As a bonus, one weapon that sorta rivals Flicker is Tiggy Sword. This in general, without Rousing Roar, has more EFR, but you will have to sharpen a lot because of Protective Polish is short time, so it does slow damage down a bit. For this, I'll only present the God Charm version since I don't think the budget version is worth it over the Flicker budgets. But this thing hits hard, but again though, with Rousing Roar, Flicker should outdamage this. Now you may ask, where's Dereliction for? Well, I plan to make a separate video for that. Dereliction is the best damage you can get in the game for every weapon, but obviously it has some big downsides, so I'll do a separate video of that to cover that in full, mostly because I don't like long videos and this one's getting kind of long, so let's end it. Those are my meta builds, hope you guys enjoyed them. I'm hoping the title updates shake things up as we still don't have a lot of the new skills as decos. Things like foray or chain crit decos could alter some builds potential. And of course with new mons equals new weapons, so with Lucent, who knows, maybe Narga will become king again. But that's it for me, make sure to give the video a like if you want more builds, comment down below what style of play you're enjoying with Longsword, and perhaps if you're not using Flicker, which Longsword are you currently using? And lastly, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more Sunbreak Epicness.